The definition of war, regardless of where you search it, mentions physical conflict that implies armed forces fighting against each other. But today, war is something quite secretive and more elaborate. It comes in the form of cyber attacks, where countries use technology and data to cause equal or possibly greater harm to each other. We don't realize how vulnerable we are to hacking. Almost anything can be hacked. Laptops, drones, cars, even nuclear reactors. Cyberspace is now officially the fifth element of war. Countries now consider cyberspace as a military domain, in addition to land, air, sea, and space. Cyber warfare has many branches. Most renowned amongst them is cyber espionage. Cyber espionage, or cyber spying, is the use of computers to access confidential information. Some of the world's first computers were tools for cyber spying. During the Second World War, the father of computing, Alan Turing, invented his bomb machine to decode secret radio messages encrypted by the German Enigma machine. Today, most countries rely on cyber espionage much more than human intelligence. Cyber espionage is subdivided into three major parts. Most preeminent amongst them is data theft, where intelligence agencies steal state secrets of their adversaries. One of the recent examples of this is China stealing technology and intellectual property of the USA and creating tech to match the USA. Another is hack and leak operations, where attackers leak sensitive information of their adversaries. In 2016, sensitive emails of the American Democratic Party were leaked, allegedly, by Russian intelligence, thereby damaging the credibility of the presidential candidate and influencing the elections. Most alarming of all when it comes to cyber espionage is information warfare. Cyber disinformation can be used to split society. During a disinformation campaign, one strikes at the cleavages that exist in the society in terms of race, language, religion, etc. Information warfare is not new. What is new is the size and the scale of it now. Misinformation and conspiracy theories widen the gap between opposing camps, pulling the people further apart. We reach a point where we can no longer understand the other side of the argument, can no longer reconcile our differences. The use of information isn't an act of war, but now it is being used to bring down the morale of society and used to make people distrust each other or even hate each other. Disinformation campaigns can rip apart society over time, but a more direct cyber attack can rattle the country instantaneously by disrupting critical industries like banks and broadcasters. South Korea, March 20th, 2013. Cyber attacks disrupt major financial institutions and television broadcasters. The malware injected by the corrupted antivirus software shuts down hundreds of computers, but it fails to halt broadcast. Meanwhile, Korean financial institutions took a massive blow on their banks so much so that citizens could not withdraw money on their ATMs. According to the Korean Internet and Security Agency, during the attack, 48,000 computer systems were destroyed. This attack was limited to Korea, but some attacks are programmed to go viral, like cyber pandemics, crumbling multinational corporations and government agencies. Ukraine, June 2017. Ransomware popularly known as NotPetya, exploits bugs found in older versions of Windows, encrypts computer file databases, and demands the ransom in Bitcoin. But the ransom is a cover-up. Encrypted computer data will never be recovered, even if you decide to pay the ransom. This cyber attack was targeted at Ukraine. It paralyzed national services like banks, airports, power grids, but the infection spread quickly across the world jeopardizing multinational corporations and government agencies. The biggest shipping company in the world was almost brought to its knees. In total, NotPetya caused damage worth $10 billion. 
The consequences of cyber attacks are not always limited to cyberspace. Sometimes it extends its influence into the physical world. One of the prime examples of that is Stuxnet. 2010, Iran. Investigators found 15 Iranian nuclear facilities were infected by malicious software known as Stuxnet, allegedly developed by the USA and Israel. Stuxnet reportedly destroyed numerous centrifuges in Iran's uranium enrichment facility by causing them to burn themselves out. Stuxnet proved cyber attacks can destroy physical machines in an unprecedented way. Gaza, 2019. Israeli airstrike blows up civilian building in retaliation to cyber attack. This was the first instance in the world to use physical weapons to stop a cyber attack. After the World War, the unprecedented cruelty of wars prompted the nation to agree on rules of engagement, popularly known as the Geneva Convention. It outlawed inhumane weapons and actions. It's also illegal to target civilians with physical weapons. But there are no such universally agreed rules of engagement in cyber warfare. Even if there was one, it would only work if states can be held responsible. But cyber warfare is shadow attacks, and countries often deny carrying out cyber attacks. What's more alarming is cyberspace is not alone in joining the group of military domains in the 21st century Another such military domain is space, which has always been a fantasy of the human race. Laser-shooting spaceships are now not limited just to sci-fi movies. Check out our next video to find out how countries are weaponizing space. Click here to watch. If you don't subscribe now, you might never come across this channel again. If you want more interesting content like this, then click on the subscribe button.